Hello everyone. So in this video, we will discuss about that what is protoplast culture. So without any delay, let's start the video. So first of all, uh, we should know that what is protoplast. So protoplast is a cell which is devoid of cell wall. Means as you know, the plant cells they have cell wall. Like here in this diagram, this red color a rectangle it represent the cell wall. So in case of protoplast when the cell wall is absent like this so the cell without cell wall is known as the protoplast now how we can culture this protoplast so for this there are certain steps like first isolation of protoplast means first of all we have to isolate the protoplast then after isolation its viability will be tested means whether the isolated protoplast is living or is in the dead condition means just to know whether it is alive or dead. So the second step is to check the viability of protoplast and finally the viable protoplast or you can say the live protoplast they are cultured. So these three are the basic steps of protoplast culture. Now let's discuss all of these three steps in detail. First is the isolation of protoplast. So isolation of protoplast means how we can get the protoplast from plant. So protoplast can be isolated from any plant part like from root, leaves, fruit, tuber, root nodule, etc. Means every living part of the plant it contain the protoplast. So how we can isolate that protoplast? So for the isolation of protoplast, generally we follow two methods. First is the mechanical method and second is the enzymatic method of protoplast isolation. So first is the mechanical method of protoplast isolation. Here we do not use any kind of enzyme. We just mechanically isolate the protoplast. So for this we follow the following steps like first of all the plant tissue has been taken from which we have to isolate the protoplast. Then this plant tissue is now treated with one molar sucrose solution which ultimately caused the plasmolysis of this cell. After plasmolysis, now we just microscopically observe the cells and after observation under the microscope, we very carefully cut the cell wall of the cells with a knife because it's a mechanical method. So here we make the use of knife to cut the cell wall a very skill is needed for this task and once the cell wall has been you can say removed or cut it with this knife now we have the protoplast so these release protoplast will be isolated but as it's a mechanical method so it has a drawback that the person should be highly skilled in order to cut the cell wall with a knife because there are very chances to damage the cell during cutting of cell wall with that knife and when the protoplast has been released so we can simply collect the protoplast for the culture. Second is enzymatic method of protoplast. Here we use certain enzymes that degrade the cell wall. As we know the cell wall is consists of cellulose and the two cells they are in contact with each other by middle lamella which is formed of pectate substances. So here we make the use of generally three enzymes first pectinase and then cellulase and hemicellulase which are used to digest the cellulosic and hemicellulosic components of cell wall like and in case of enzymatic method we generally follow two types of procedure first is simultaneously or one step method here all of these enzymes they are used in one step like we can use both enzymes that is mesial enzyme or pectinases and cellulases in one step while second way of doing this enzymatic method is a sequential or two step method where the tissue is first treated with the pectinase then the cells are separated and these separated cells are now treated with cellulase to release the protoplast means in the two step method first we use pectinase then cells are separated then cells are treated with cellulase so in case of one step we use all of these enzymes in a one step while in case of two step method we use these 
these enzymes step by step. So by this we can enzymatically isolate the protoplast. So this is the complete procedure of enzymatic method of the protoplast isolation like first we take the leaf after sterilization we remove its epidermis then we can either perform simultaneously or one step method as I told or two step method. So in case of one step method or simultaneous method so the plasmolyzed cells we have taken the plasmolyzed cells and now we give both enzymes that is pectinase and cellulose in one step that's why it's known as the one step method. So both the enzyme pectinase and cellulose are added at the single step and which ultimately results in the release of protoplast and these release protoplast they are isolated. Now in case of sequential or two step method so again we take the plasmolyzed cells and first we add the one of the enzyme that is pectinase it will degrade the pectin substance of middle lamella and ultimately separate the cells. Then these released cells or isolated cells are now treated with cellulase enzyme. This cellulase will degrade the cell wall which is made up of the cellulose. So after degradation of cell wall now we have protoplast that is released protoplast which can which we can isolate it. So by these two method either one step or two step method we can isolate the protoplast by making the use of enzymes that is pectinase and cellulase. Now first step has been done means we have isolated the protoplast either by mechanical method or by enzymatic method. Now the second task is to check the viability status of protoplast means whether the isolated protoplast is alive or dead because we have to culture only live protoplast not the dead protoplast so that's why this step is crucial we have to check whether the isolated protoplast is still alive or is dead so for this we make the use of certain dyes so these include like first is FDA dye that is fluorescent diacetate dye this method is known as fluorescent diacetate staining method this FDA dye it stain the living cells yellow green within the five minutes means we treated all of the cells with this FDA fluorescent diacetate dye only the live cells or you can say only the living cells they turned yellow they stained yellow with this dye so we can clearly identify that yellow cells are living cells or living protoplast so we can select them other dyes can also be used like second is TTC that is tetrazoleum chloride straining staining method here again this dye it stain the living cell but it stain living cell into red color so the red cells are living protoplast if we stain our cells with this TTC dye next dye is Evans blue here the dead cells will be turned blue means the dead cell will take the Evans blue stain and they will be turned up into blue color so all the blue cells are dead cells so we can select them and remove them so this method also tells us about the dead protoplast similarly the next one is phenosephranin staining method or dye here this phenosephranin it also stain the dead cells the dead cells they turn red when we stain with this phenosephranin dye so by using these staining methods we can easily identify or easily select out the viable protoplast and proceed that protoplast for culturing. Now the third step after the viability checking now third step is just to culture the protoplast. So to culture the protoplast a complete procedure it include like first we isolate the protoplast as I explained. So isolated protoplast is now cleaned by centrifugation after cleaning the protoplast solution is now poured into trial and cooled nutrient medium. This medium will give the essential nutrient for the growth of protoplast culture. Then mix the two gently but quickly rotate each petri dish means now we have to mix the protoplast solution and nutrient medium with each other that's why we have to mix these two by rotating each petri plate or petri dish. Now allow this medium to set and seal the petri dish with parafilm this is the complete procedure means after adding protoplast to the culture media just seal the petri plate with the paraffin wax and now incubate 
Now the pro protoplasts that are capable of dividing means the living protoplasts that can divide they undergo the cell division from callus within two to three weeks and the callus is now subculture once the callus has been formed now this callus will be subcultured on the fresh medium and after subculturing the embryogenesis means formation of embryo will begin from this callus and subsequently the complete plant will be developed from this callus so this is the complete protocol of protoplast culture now what are the different techniques that can be used for the protoplast culture so they include first is a liquid drop culture here in this technique simply we just you can say we place the suspended protoplast protoplast the protoplast which is suspended in the culture medium or nutrient medium so this suspended protoplast in the nutrient medium is placed on the liquid medium in the form of drops so this culture media or nutrient media will give nutrition to protoplast and it will also take the nutrient from below liquid medium as you clearly see in the diagram so with this liquid drop culture our protoplast will grow second technique is hanging drop culture method here as the name indicate hanging drop so in this case you can clearly see from this diagram that the small drops of protoplast they are suspended on the inner side of lid of the petri plate means the petri plate have taken there is a culture media in the petri plate and now the you can say the protoplast in the form of drop is suspended on the inner lid of petri plate and this lid is placed on the petri plate now as this culture drops they are hanging or suspended from the lid so that's why this technique is known as hanging drop culture method so it will take its nutrition because this culture media it contain the nutrient for the protoplast growth next is agar culture so here we just simply culture our protoplast in the agar medium is protoplast suspension which are generally mixed with equal volume of agar are placed in the petri plate and by this agar culture our protoplast remain you can say it remain in the fixed position so it will take the nutrient from the agar medium and the cells will be in the fixed position next is feeder layer culture in this case we take a feeder layer of x-ray irradiated non dividing living protoplast means non dividing x-ray irradiated living protoplast is already there in the petri plate this previously you can say previously x e ready non dividing living protoplast will provide the essential growth factor for the growth of new protoplast so now we placed our protoplast on this feeder layer at the low density and now as we know this feeder layer it will release certain growth factor that will be utilized by our protoplast so this way of using feeder layer for the culturing of protoplast so that this is known as the feeder layer method next co culturing here we culture two protoplast simultaneously with each other one is slow growing protoplast and other is fast growing protoplast this fast growing protoplast it will provide the essential nutrient for the growth of slow growing protoplast so these two protoplast will grow side by side and will we get the you can say maximum result by this co-culturing method so these are the certain method of protoplast culture that how we can proceed the protoplast culture after isolation and viability checking of protoplast now these are the optimal condition for the protoplast culture like for the protoplast these are general condition they may vary from species to species but these are general condition like for example temperature should be 20 to 28 degree centigrade the ph should be 5.5 to 5.9 we should use 0.25 percent casein hydrolysate there should be oxygen harbon that is naa naphthalene acetic acid cytokinin should be there that is bap can be there benzyl 6 adenine purine and glucose and sucrose should also be there in the medium so these are some general optimized condition but uh, remember these conditions may change from species to species now finally the applications of protoplast culture that why we are doing this 
protoplast culture what are the applications so first is the development of novel hybrid means if we culture the protoplast of two different species and now we allow them to fuse with each other so there will be possibility that we may get a new hybrid plant after the protoplast fusion so the protoplast culture is also one of the step in the protoplast fusion for the production of a new hybrid or novel hybrid plant second application that by this protoplast culture we can grow single cell means single cell cloning can also be easily done by this protoplast next application is that in case of single derived colony isolation of mutants is very easy means if we perform the single cell colony then the isolation of mutants from that colony is very much easier now the regeneration of entire plant or improvement through protoplast culture means as i told by this protoplast culture we can make or regenerate the complete plant or we can also improve the plant by this protoplast culture next the genetic transformation through dna uptake can be achieved means if we want to make some genetic alteration in the uh, genetic material so we can also make the use of this protoplast culture so these are the some applications of protoplast culture so this is all about that how we can isolate the protoplast either mechanically or enzymatically then the different method of viability testing of protoplast and ultimately the different method of protoplast culture so this is all about the protoplast culture so that's all for today guys see you in the next video thank you very much